The new MacBook Pro 14 inch is double the price of the MacBook Air, but is it double the performance and the value? Well, I put that to the test and here are the results. Let me start with the hardware. The MacBook Air has a 13.3 inch LED screen with the resolution of 2560 by 1600, which makes for 227 pixels per inch. It's one of the best screens at that price range. P3 white color palette, 400 nits of brightness, and it's fixed at 60 hertz. On the other hand, with the Pro model, it's a 14.2 inch liquid retina XDR display with a resolution of 3024 by 1964. It's a weird ratio for a screen. It's a little bit wider, but it's a very high quality one at 254 pixels per inch. That XDR display means that it has an extreme dynamic range. Although it's not an OLED screen, but it performs like an OLED. It goes up to a thousand nits of brightness full screen and up to 1600 nits peak brightness with HDR content. 1 million by 1 contrast ratio, 1 billion colors. And last but not least, we have an adaptive refresh rate up to 120 hertz. So if you put both displays next to each other, that double the performance actually checks. And with that extra real estate, Apple packed a lot of stuff on the Pro model. The whole laptop is thicker and heavier in general. We have so much extra ports on the Pro model. I mean, from the name itself, it's for the pros. We only have two Thunderbolt 3 on the air. But on the other hand, with the Pro model, we have three USB-Cs. Thunderbolt 4, an SD card reader, plus an HDMI port, and the most exciting thing is MagSafe. As you probably may know by now that the MacBook Air doesn't have any fans, which is a very bold move from Apple, but it kind of doesn't need one because it barely heats up, which is also very weird for a laptop with this performance, yet Apple was able to manage a laptop with no fans. On the other hand, with the MacBook Pro, we have two fans. I also never heard the fans on the MacBook Pro, just FYI, but it's good to have fans on the MacBook Pro, just in case you go ham on it. The speakers, on the other hand, on both of them are really good. Good. The MacBook Air is one of the best speakers in any laptop, but the MacBook Pro takes it even further with fuller and louder speakers. Here's a quick test for you. Does it check double the performance? Kind of a yes. Let's jump to some more details. The trackpad is slightly bigger on the Pro model than the Air, but they feel both exactly the same. We do have full keyboard on both of them. This one comes in full black and this one only the keys are in black. This looks much sleeker in my opinion. And if we zoom in, we can see that the Pro model has larger function keys than the Air and also a much, much bigger escape key. The keyboards also feel exactly the same, just the Pro model is a bit clickier, but it's not very noticeable. I'm very happy that Apple added the Touch ID on the Air model because it would have been such a hassle to put the password every single time on the Air. So you almost have the exact same experience with the keyboard, with the Pro and the Air. Now, before we jump to the video editing performance, we need to remember that the MacBook Air has the M1 chip in it, which came out more than a year ago. But this MacBook Pro, on the other hand, has the M1 Pro chip that just came out. Is the M1 Pro double the performance of the M1? Let's see. I got some Sony 4K footage from my friend Brad. Go check him out, link in bio. He's also a tech YouTuber. And I threw these footage on both of them. We have the same video editing software, which is Final Cut Pro, the same settings for the timeline and full quality playback. Knowing all of that, Let's jump right into it. Both of them played 4K very smoothly, no drop frames. Scrubbing on both of them also is very smooth. I added the same color correction and color grading on one of the videos, and it also played very smoothly. Seeing that, of course, I wanted to take it even further, so I started stacking the 4K videos on top of each other, so I can see how many 4K videos can each laptop handle at the same time. After four 4K videos, the MacBook Air just gave up and started lagging and dropping a lot of frames. But I mean, it's five 4K videos on top of each other. I don't think any laptop at that price range can handle that. But before I went ham on the MacBook Pro to see its limits, I wanted to see the MacBook Air with regular use of video editing. Added some color correction, some color grading, some text at the same time. But yes, it was able to handle it very well actually. Smooth scrubbing and playback. It 
surprised me actually. Added the same thing on both of them, added the same videos and color correction and color grading, some LUTs also, text. I wanted to check the exporting time on both of them. The full video was 4 minutes and 11 seconds. The MacBook Air finished exporting with 3 minutes and the MacBook Pro with 2 minutes and 38 seconds. Is it double the performance? Well, not really, but it doesn't stop there. As I told you, I wanted to go full ham on the MacBook Pro and the results were mind-blowing. I put 8 freaking 4K videos on top of each other one text all of them with LUTs one of them with extra color correction and color grading and it worked smoothly I couldn't believe it when I was doing it but anything more than that it starts lagging but barely but eight freaking 4k videos on top of each other with LUTs and it's still working smoothly and this is the base model m1 pro and after seeing that of course I'm gonna say it's actually doubled the performance. Maybe not in export time, but with smooth video editing on Final Cut from Apple itself, boy oh boy. So at the end of this video, is the MacBook Pro doubled the value and the performance of the MacBook Air? Well, it depends on you. Here's the thing. If you want a laptop that is gonna live with you for maybe five, six, seven years, a 2000 bucks laptop will be a great investment down the line. The best screen in any laptop, great speakers, great keyboard, great trackpad, great build quality, very high performance. But on the other hand, with the MacBook Air, it's not that it's not good. If you are just starting out and you want a laptop that edits 4K videos, the MacBook Air is way more than enough for you. If you are a student, the MacBook Air is more than enough for you. And that's been it for today's episode. If you're new here, consider subscribing because I'm gonna be doing a lot of episodes about the MacBook Pro very soon. And if you have any suggestion, leave it down below in the comments. Thank you for watching and don't forget that life is all about love and dance. See ya.